Today I'm going to show you my workflow to make this stack of Twinkies into a section perspective and then process the line work in Rhino and transfer it over to Illustrator for the final touches. So let's start with drawing a clipping plane. And to make it vertical, you type V, and then I like to switch up to the top just so I can see exactly where I'm cutting through this section. Great. And one really great thing about clipping planes is that you can drag it back and forth and see in real time where exactly you want to cut the section. And it's also great for when you're modeling and you want to know what the interior space looks like. You can put one of these on or you can have them on all the time and you can go in and turn them off whenever you're not feeling them anymore. So I think that this is the view I want. So now I will draw a plane through that spot with plane and type V for vertical and then draw a plane right through there and then select everything and copy it over by pressing alt and dragging with the gumball and then deleting the old clipping plane or else it gets very confused. So. You always want to make a copy of your model before you start messing with it so you have the original. So we're going to set the view to the plane. So you want to look at the surface. Your set view tab is the third one over and then you'll go to this button and click look at surface. Select the surface you want to orient to and select the point on the surface. Click again. And that is exactly what we want. Sometimes it'll give you um, this view and so you want to go in and make sure you want to try just a different flip and so we're back to normal and to pan around you press the shift key and the right mouse button and then you can zoom in and out and then I like to hide the plane so you can see what's happening in the section and then our next step is to set the lens length so you want to go in and the default Rhino setting is at 50 and lens length is makes your sections look really interesting so at 10 it gets really extreme and the space is very distorted and it looks way longer than it actually is and then if we set the same camera lens length to 80 the section looks really flat and so it just depends on whatever you're going for. Today I'm going to go for a 25 and using the shift and right to pan around you want to kind of set the camera height next. When your camera is higher you can see more of the floor plate which is good if you want to animate the floor and then if you go down you can see more of the ceiling plane up here. I think that I would prefer right there. Another thing is if you want the model directly in your screen or you want to reset the center of your orbit, you can press ZS, which is zoom selected. And that's just a handy command that I learned way too late. So yeah. So now that we have the view that we want, you want to go to the named views tab over here. And then if you don't have that yet, you can go up to the panels and find it here. And then you want to save your view. And we'll save this one as a section perspective. And then a good thing about saving your views is if you mess it up and you want it again, you can double click it and it'll go right back there. This is good for renderings. And then I like to keep the tangent edges on so it shows the curvature of any surface that I'm making 2D and then the hidden lines because it gives you extra information to work with later and you can always get rid of it if you don't want it. And then the scene silhouette's always good and the clipping plane intersections will create a separate layer that has just the surfaces that are cut through on it and that's basically like giving you an automatic darkened section cut for when you process it later in Rhino. So let's save this one as Section Perspective 03. Now that the Make 2D is done, we'll go up to the top view and go and find it. 
then move it over here and zoom. My thought process for editing lines in Rhino is to trim them however I want here and so I don't have to worry about it later. I also change the layers to what I think I'll want the line weights to be later. So I'll group all of the 0.25 line weights into one category and so on. And if I don't know exactly what line weight I want for a section, for a part of the model, I'll put all of those kinds of lines that I think I'll want the same into the same layer, and I can set those separately in Illustrator as well. So to begin, I go in with the hidden lines and select all of them, yep, there, and change them to my own hidden layer so that it goes in as one. And then I hide that so we can have a clearer view of what's going on. And then next I go in and select the tangents, which are the lines that show the curves of a surface. And those I want to be really small because I don't want them to distract too much from the rest of my section. They're not the information that I want to get across. Next we will go and select the curves and those we don't want to take over the section, but we also don't want them to fade away and blend in with the tangent lines. And so I change those to the medium layer and hide those as well. And then we have a few lines left over here, and those are the seam silhouettes. And so we'll go in and select those and change them to medium as well. There they are. Okay. Now we're left with the clipping plane, and that's the good thing about using a clipping plane. It gives you your section cut already, and it's separate from all the other lines that you have. And so I'm going to change that to the cut through layer that I drew previously, and we can turn that off and collapse it. And then now it's time to go in and edit the lines. So I'm going to trim these. And then go over here, great, and then we'll zoom in closer. And another great command is extend. So let's try joining them again. If we join them in Rhino, when we export them to Illustrator, they'll remain cl as closed curves, so it's easier to use Live Paint or just edit the curves as a whole. Okay, and now let's turn on these curves. And one thing I've noticed is that you can't see the delineation between the floor and the walls, and I that's in hidden because I didn't boolean them together before I made 2D, so it didn't register that they were two separate surfaces. Now I'm going to go in and select where the floor and the wall intersects. And then when I do sections, I like to have this part be a little bit darker than the wall because it's a more significant plane change. And so I'll take that and then I made a separate layer called floor because I don't know exactly what line weight I want them, but I know I want all of this line to have the same line weight. So now that we're done with that, we'll turn off the hidden lines again because they aren't very important. And one, you can either go through and delete all of these or I'll show you something in Illustrator where you can cover up all these lines instead of deleting them, but this is definitely best practice if you can do it. And we'll go in and extend, and then I don't want that one. And then I'll finish cleaning these up.
The next step is to add scale figures. A few good resources for scale figures is pimpmydrawings.com and also just Mirage Studio 7, I believe, has a good library of CAD blocks that you can download for free, and Pimp My Drawings is also free. The ones that I have for today are from Pimp My Drawings. And those are pretty great because they have either Illustrator files or uh, DWG files. And so first let's load in the doctor and a panel like this will come up and we can always scale it later. So she, she turned out to be very large. Um, and a good thing about putting scale figures in in Rhino is that you can scale them to exactly the height that you want to be. And I always like to do my drawings at full scale and scale them down right before I export them just so I know that everything is the correct dimension and I'm not surprised later. And so we'll make her six feet tall and drag her back in there and then off to the side because I don't exactly know where I want to put her yet. And then we'll import the rest of them. Now we have a dog. It's very nice. It's a good dog. And he will be two and a half feet long. Drag him down again. And last one is the woman standing DWG cad. How exciting. There she is. Scale her again. Why don't we make her a bit shorter at five and a half feet tall. Great, so now that we have all of our scale figures, we will populate the section. One thing that I like about the Pimp My Drawing scale figures is that they come with an outline and detail lines, and so you can go in and turn off the detail lines if you're just looking for the silhouette, and then you can also edit the line weights really easily and create colorful backdrops or block it out with white for the figures. So let's group these. Don't want to get mixed up. Awesome. So next you just want to populate your section. Okay, so I think that's good enough, and now I've turned on my hidden lines again. So, so I've just copied the drawing over because before I scale it, I like to see, I like to keep one completely normal original copy around in case I mess up the scaling at all. And so now let's scale it. One tip I have is to make a rectangle the size of your paper and so when you load it into Illustrator it is the correct size. Great. Now we can go in and select everything and type export. I like to export as a, an AutoCAD DWG file because it keeps the polylines how you set them in Rhino and then it also resets the origin when you load it into Illustrator so that you don't have to search for your drawing all over the place. So, section perspective 01. And then it'll ask you how you want to export it, and I always do 2007 polylines to keep the polylines as polylines. And so there it is. And now if we switch to Illustrator, you can open it up. So now that we have our drawing centered and 
in Illustrator, I generally start out with all of the lines at 0.25 and all of the lines black. And then for the first thing to change, I go to the hidden and make them dashed at I like a good 2, 3 or 3, 5, depending on the scale of things. And so that looks okay for right now, but we'll see how it looks when we get to the rest of the drawing. Who we have left are the outer and inner lines of the people. And so for the inner lines, I like them at 0.25. And then instead of changing the opacity, well, I'll change the opacity and show you, but when you change the opacity, it gives you the overlays where they have intersected each other. And so instead of changing the opacity, if I want a really smooth line drawing, I'll go and press shift and change the grayness of the colors. Let's do 65. Now I want to color in the section cut as well as put a white background behind the line work for the people so that they can stand out from the background lines. And so I'll make a new layer and call it human background and then drag it down behind the inner lines of the people but in front of all of the lines for your structure. And then selecting the outer lines, you can copy them into the human background layer and then switch that and fill it with white. And then a, you can play around with this to your preference. We'll check 85, see if they kind of stand out from the back more. And I like the way that's looking and I think that the humans are standing out well enough. And so we'll lock that and lock that. And then I feel like the people are blending a little bit too much into the 0.5s of the curves behind them. And so I'm gonna make them a little stronger. And then the inner ones probably need to be a little bit stronger as well. Great. And now we will do the section cut. We're going to make a compound path from the cut through lines and select those, copy them into layer 10. And if you go up to object, you can find compound path and make or type control eight. And then for a compound path, it will treat those two paths as one and fill the space in between. And I want to hatch these today. So I'll go down into patterns, basic graphics, and then textures and playing around with hatches is very, very fun. So you should take some time and do that. And then I also usually like to, I could either leave it at that or you can add some color behind it. And it's really helpful to keep a library of colors that you like to use. And I think I've, I've had these since first year. So that kind of means it's time for a new color palette, but what you're gonna do. And then why don't we make the opacity 50 and see how that looks? I like that so far. So now that we have that, you can kind of check your drawing periodically. One way to alter the patterns even more is if you go into, let's label these, hatch and cut fill. And in the hatch, if you select that, you can go up into object and transform. I'm going to make the hatch more dense. And so if you turn on preview and then deselect the transform objects, that's sheer. We don't want to do that. We can do that, but I don't want to do that. Scale. That's what we're looking for. Try a good 50. And that is pretty much how I'd want it. So if you decide that your hidden lines look too dark or distracting for the drawing you're making, you can go back into the hidden lines and 
first you can try to make them gray, see what that looks like, and I think that looks a lot better. More subtle. Yeah, okay. The drawing is done. And on the next slide I'll show you the difference between a flat section and a section perspective. So thank you for watching today.